We welcome you to the Fox College Hoops tip-off, sponsored by Progressive. Get slammed on savings today. And we welcome you to Jersey Basketball at the place they lovingly call The Rock. And inside, the fans of their beloved Pirates are pumped up, and why not? The Xavier Musketeers come a-calling to play one of the hottest, if not hottest, teams in the country. They're in the midst of a 10-game winning streak. They're longest since 92-93. Their first 8-0 Big East start in school history. As you look at the standings, yes, they created separation, and they have a date with Villanova in Philadelphia next week, which could be a monster game. But first things first, hi again, everyone. Tim Brando by my side is Donnie Marshall. Obviously, there are reasons why yeah. this team is where they are. Yeah, well, listen, they have all those. When you talk about boxes, they check them all. They have size. They have, they have the auxiliary pieces. They also have experience, and by the way, the best player in America. <laughs> now on the other side, for Xavier, listen, they've lost five of their last six. They're coming off of a tough loss to Marquette. A great chance to redeem themselves here today. Time now for the Chief Grand Cherokee starting lineups. Scruggs, Marshall, the veterans, Carter, Fremantle, the newbies, Tyreek Jones coming from Connecticut has his opportunity to play before home folks. McKnight, the glue to go along with Powell, the player of the year candidate. Roden, who's come on strong. Kale and Romero Gill, who is a rim runner and shot protector. And as we prepare for this tip, this is the young man, along with several others, that will help lead his Pirates today against a Xavier team, quite frankly, that has a sense of desperation coming in. And, and really, there's not a, a huge, when you talk about separation, there's not a, a huge gap between teams like, say, Seton Hall and then DePaul, you know, in the lower part of the Big East. So Xavier's one of those teams that if you let them hang around, they can scare you. Xavier still has a lot of confidence. They're big. They understand they have to do the job, though, in inside and stay together on the road you have to stay together as a unit our officials this morning jeffrey anderson lamar simpson and tony shiaza now this is a very early start even by east coast standards it'll be interesting to see what the biorhythms are of these athletes in the early going right away a turnover will go the other way yeah not a good start you don't want to turn the ball over your first play down the floor but for keys xavier control the glass you don't want to just be even you got to dominate the glass if you want a chance for seton hall defend with a purpose meaning you get one stop get another stop you got to be on a string if i move timmy you got to come with me and so on and so forth those are today's boost mobile keys to the game Tell you what, the crowd came in quickly, didn't they, for this early <laughs> they start? I mean, it is packed. 20 minutes ago, there was no one in yes, here. Yes, indeed. And into the scoring column right away. This is a very confident basketball team right now. And the junior from Fort Pierce out of Wheeler High School is one of the reasons why. Anytime you can get a basket from someone not named Miles Powell early in the game, that's a confidence booster for Kevin Willard. Fremantle, who has an outstanding future, giving it up to Scruggs. And there is the dump down to Tyreek Jones, working mano a mano against Gill. Shot clock down to three. Marshall with a tough one, but he rattles it home. That's great defense by Roden, though. I mean, he, you can live with those if that's what's going to happen all day long. Great offense beats great defense every day of the week. Quincy McKnight using the Gill pick. Can't get it to go. Outstanding block out by Tyreek Jones. And you know he's going to play with a lot of purpose today. Had a very difficult ending to that double overtime loss. And just as I mentioned it, he picks up the loose change and tips it through to make it 5-2. It's a great play by Scruggs. You beat your guy off the dribble. Now the big man, Gill, has to step up. That leaves Jones wide open for the putback. They're going to need more of those today, getting into the teeth of the defense. Given the circumstances coming in, that one goes crying off the front iron for Jared Roden. Given the circumstances coming in, the way Xavier lost at home, a game they really should have won and lost. They were 11 of 25 from the free throw line in that double OT loss to Marquette. They really need a good start, don't they? Yeah, they really do. And, and you know, listen, Quentin Gooden's not a terrific three-point shooter, but he had it going in that game. You can't live with that. And, and think that that's going to be your success. Again, it's getting into the paint and then big stepping up. Every time you see Gill step up, 
The guys behind him in dark jerseys have to be ready for an offensive putback twice now. Right away, a 7-0 run as Fremantle tapped that one through. Here's Powell calling his own number, and Jones takes in the rebound. Four jump shots now in a row for Seton Hall. That's when you'd start to see, hey, let's see how it feels. They're not going. Now I would expect more things at the rim, throwing the ball inside, some passing and cutting off of touches down low, maybe even some pick and rolls, but four jump shots straight. You've only made one of those. Well, Fremantle and Carter have been heard from already for Xavier. Marshall going with the sledgehammer slam, and he does draw the contact. We'll get to the free throw line as a result. That foul goes against Kale. And sometimes when you're on the road, you need shots like this early. You'd love them late, but that gets you going a little bit. Getting to the defense, the big guy steps up. Now twice, other guys have to be active and around the glass. And Xavier doing a great job right now. Attention to detail is awesome to start this game. And that's one of the components of playing on the road. You got to make your free throws as Marshall misses there. You got to rebound and you got to take care of the basketball as well. well. There you see the difficult story against Marquette. And to Travis Steele's credit, we spoke with him prior to the game. He said, you know, regardless of whatever you say about how you performed, whatever the upside is, you can't go 11 of 25 at the free throw line at home and ever expect to win. Well, they started 0 for 2, and Marshall's a much better free throw shooter than that. McKnight it was stolen, and there is Najee Marshall in the passing lane. Three on one. Gosh, there's another example of an advantage that's lost. You know, sometimes when you're struggling, and you think that you're helping your teammate by making the extra pass, you're, you're really not because your timing is off. And I think that's what Xavier's struggling with right now. They've lost five of six. Each guy, and they're great kids on Xavier's team. Travis Steele will tell you that. But sometimes you got to figure out a better way to help your team. There's that rim protection, but they're going to count the basket, say the ball was on a downward flight. So credit the basket of 9 nothing run now. Offensively, the bucket credited to Scruggs. Yeah, I disagree with that call. <laughs> I mean, we have the replay. <laughs> yeah. So it's tougher for the, the officials, but regardless, they know Gill is down low, even if that shot was called goaltending. That night, that ball, I think, may have been deflected by Scruggs. And now he comes out of there with it. But another jump shot and down seven points. I think right now, Seton Hall Taking the easy way out early on here. You're going to be able to get jump shots all game long. Got to make this defensive Xavier work. Fremantle counted and a foul. Up and over Roden. And another young man that's playing before some home folks here. This is simple basketball over that left shoulder jump hook. Xavier <laughs> in control here in Newark. <laughs> Fox College Hoops is sponsored by Progressive Insurance. Save when you bundle auto, home, or motorcycle insurance. Newark Penn Station hopping on Saturdays as per normal. And then you look there at uh, Zach Fremantle talking with uh, Tyreek Jones. This is a young man 15 miles north of here is Teaneck, New Jersey. And uh, Bergen Catholic, one of the real dominant programs that last shot was outstanding Donnie it was exactly what you want in isolation I think it's it's the bigger story about him is how really no schools around this era recruited him <laughs> you know so he's playing with purpose that's his uh, dad and mom Larry and Michaela his brother Ian is uh, right there in the middle and they are taking in the sights this morning I'd be remiss if I didn't mention we saw Tyreek Jones walking with him before that his mother also is here Petronia Bailey they're from Bloomfield Connecticut right around the corner from where I live so I got to give them a little bit of love as well she's, always, in, she's in the building with, full of energy always taking care of the nutmeg state <laughs> that's right my friend Donnie right, they, take, they take they take care of me too. I know they do I know they, I know they do <laughs> Samuel just into the game and he's rejected by Jones and he says see ya. <laughs> well right on cue Tyreek Jones finding a way now listen he's got some big boys he's got to play against at the other end but defensively Tyreek Jones understands I have to be ready to help great athletic ability a little undersized in this game at 6 9 <laughs> yeah. 6 9 and he's undersized but doing the job there defensively well, Tyree Samuel is uh, 
the freshman from Mont Montreal, a way of Orangeville Prep in Ontario, and he's got Huge some upside. future. He has got some future. Obiagu, another big. They've got so many of them, four guys at 6'10 or better, and Sandro Mamou Kalashvili is being weaved back into the lineup to some extent, but it's tough. He's been gone for two and a half weeks, and trying to get him the kind of minutes he needs is, at this time of year, not always easy. There's a walk. By the way, during this 12-0 run that Xavier was on, every player on the floor scored, so everybody has been involved. For the Musketeers Again, early. You, you love that when you're on the road, balance, unselfish. And now the, the key is for their guys to come in off the bench and continue the, the same momentum and pace. Samuel, again, another jump shot from downtown, easily rebounded by Tyreek Jones. And I say this all the time, when guys, I had teammates who are like, why are you shooting that ball while well, I'm open? You tell them, there's a reason you're open. There's a reason the defense is leaving you open, and Tyreek Jones, well, what, not open, finishes. What anticipation, <laughs> too. He knew that ball was going to be short, and he got himself in perfect position to clean it up here. Xavier looking for a bounce back. This is the way you want to start. Tyreek Jones, emphatic down low. Sometimes the pressures of today's world can make it tough to take care of yourself. But Nature's Bounty has innovative ways to help you maintain balance and help keep you active and well-rested. Because, hey, tomorrow's coming up fast. Nature's Bounty. Because you're better off healthy. Ah. Mm -hmm. Would you care for another helping, darling? Yes, my love. <laughs> Garçon. Red Bull gives you wings. Big East Basketball is sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee. Tim Brando, Donnie Marshall, first of two outstanding college basketball games you'll get today. There's 44-year-old Kevin Willard now in his 10th season. His 13th season overall, but his 10th here at Seton Hall. And he's troubled, I'm sure, by what he's seen early in this game. Shavar Reynolds now on the floor with the ball, number 33. And just mentioned Mamou Kalashvili. He's in for the first time as well. And yet another turnover as McKnight was on the sideline taking that dribble handoff. But Willard, you're, you're, you're in a tough spot here if you, you're talking about Mamou. Kellis Feely, Sandro's a kid who you need to be on the floor, but you want to, like you said, weave him back in. You want to slowly integrate him back into, for a couple of things, get him into game shape, but he has to be integrated into their system that they've been playing without him for so long this season. But I think overall, postseason play is where you need to really be focusing on getting him to be ready for you. You don't want to wear him down back so soon. How about Kiki? Kiki Tandy, this is the freshman from Hopkinsville, Kentucky, makes it 17 to 2, and the Hall now have really dug themselves a hole. And without question, the best shooter on this Xavier team is Kiki Tandy, and man, that, there is a lid on it for Seton Hall. Anthony Nelson with a little up and under move at the hoop. The Hall scored on their first trip. Since then, they've been in a drought of five minutes and 40 seconds as a whistle stops play on the dribble drive by Scruggs. Well, the beauty of, of what's happening and why it's happening right now for Xavier is the spacing. Guys are staying out. The perimeter guys are, are outside the three-point line, and it's giving the guards an opportunity for Xavier to get their head to the rim, use their dribble. I mean, j just take a look. I mean, look at where the Xavier guys are. I mean, they are... Just in, I mean, this space here, there's no one with, there's, the next closest guy defensively is in the paint. And that's just a great job understanding where your teammates are and finding the open man. Well, the drought finally ends at the free throw line from a scoring standpoint. As Scruggs gets that free throw. Mamu Kalashvili off the window. And they need more of that. That's just a terrific move by him. He's the biggest guy on the floor. Besides Gill, he's the next biggest guy on the floor. Some mismatch problems for Xavier. Can Seton Hall take advantage of those? They're showing a 2-3 zone right now defensively, trying to mix it up. There's the pull-up. Tandy Boy, again. You talk about Samuel for 
Seton Hall having a huge upside. Kiki Tandy is going to be special. He can shoot the heck out of the ball. You know, and against Seton Hall, you better have an in-between game. You better be willing to pull up. There is another run to the rim by Marshall to clean up Zach Fremantle's miss. And this is a team, as we mentioned, playing with a sense of desperation. And, and this, this Xavier team, not a great outside shooting team. So for them to be able to get those points at the rim is huge. And Seton Hall really doesn't have an answer for them defensively right now. One team just playing harder than the other, Timmy. Xavier with uh, eight second chance points in this game. And against the front line as big and as bold as Seton Hall, that's saying something. I mean, this is a, as Timmy would say, a dandy from Tandy. <laughs> you can use that, Timmy. And then here they're just, they're running the floor. I mean, that, that, that extra effort plays are huge for a team that's been struggling the last six games or so. You have been around me much too long. <laughs> Pride of authorship has never been an issue with me. <laughs> like coaches, I'll steal good material. <laughs> Powell, by the way, is scoreless. But it's not uncommon for him to struggle in opening halves. We saw that against uh, St. John's just a couple of weeks ago. Fremantle comes up empty, and that rebound easily off the deck for Romero Gill. I think it's this time of the game, it's time for Seton Hall to test the feet of the Xavier defenders. They really have not done that yet. A lot of jump shots. You got to get your head down. Plus, involve the officials. Put the pressure on them to call the foul. And there you go. Did exactly that. This is the gamer. This is the glue of this Seton Hall team. When Powell was out with concussion protocol, it was McKnight that became a leader. Tomorrow, make sure you're watching. Great start for Xavier. And let's go in the huddle of Travis Steele. We've done a great job, and I keep on saying it, fellas. We've done a great job on the glass. Both ends, we are dominating the glass. That's got to continue. Limit them to one shot, one shot only. Get on that glass down at the other end. We've given up one layup so far this game, and that's it. That's it. Keep our defense nice and tight. Keep them off the foul line. And everything he's saying is coming true. They have an advantage 13-3 to on the glass, and... You know, they're dominating the paint 12 to 2. This, you couldn't ask for a better start if you're Travis Steele. He was in great spirits when we visited really him in his locker room. You know, for a guy adjusting to being in the second seat to the first seat, and this is second year, he knows the expectations coming off a really good recruiting mm. season, but he's dealing with a lot of really young guys and real veteran guys. And sometimes that can be a difficult mesh. I got to tell you, people think, oh, it's easy. You get you, you get paid more. You, you might get an upgrade in your, your living quarters. So you, you get a bigger house. But you still, those players that are older now, you were in their house as a, an assistant recruiting them. And now sometimes it's hard to let those guys know, hey, I'm the oh, same yeah. guy, but I, I have different responsibilities as your coach. I think he's handled it well. He's got a couple really bright young players on this team. He's just got to figure out how to continue to make the older guys happy. Up against the shot clock. Carter falling away. Woo. This Boy. may be your day when you're up against the clock like that and get that one to go. But Carter and Fremantle are some of these newbies we're discussing that uh, know how to play within the team concept. Their decision making has been solid. Well, that's the key. I think that those losses that you've seen Xavier have, the decision making has not been great, especially late game. So you need guys to step up early and make the right play. And you just saw Nelson just throw one up from the hip. The, really, the decision making right now has been very poor for the favored Pirates. Trailing now by 18, almost at the halfway mark, and a rare turnover by Xavier. It'll go the other way. Oh, Carter, last game against Marquette, he couldn't make the standing still. 0 for 4 from the free throw line. That one on the move, a couple feet back. It's a beautiful youngster, youngster that was playing. At Ohio U, and he played so well in a loss by 21 that he raised the eyebrow of Steele and decided, you know what, I'm gonna, if I can get you through the transfer portal, I will. McKnight with the bump against Kiki Tandy when driving to the basket, and he'll get to the line. By the way, Powell and Gill scoreless. Powell is 0 for 2 and is still sitting. Yeah, well, now he just came out onto the floor, so he was on the bench for a good four minutes of playing time. Gill is out there as well. It'll be interesting to see if. If Miles starts calling his own number. And he doesn't normally chase points. He lets the game come to him. 
and he's not that kid, but you don't want to dig a hole so deep that he's not able to pull you out of it. Yeah. I think, and I never thought I'd say this about this year's Seton Hall team, I think you need to slow it down a tiny bit. I think you got to, you know, get your guys in order on the offensive end and, and run some stuff for him. There's a turnover, and Powell with a run out. Pass Tandy, got it on the rim. Taken down, though, the other way. Scruggs with a quick outlet to Najee Marshall. Ooh, ooh, behind the back into Fremantle. Count the basket. Goaltending against Gill. The second, that time, I believe, the ball was yes. indeed on a downward flight. But this lead now has ballooned to 20. Yeah, this is a terrific play by Najee Marshall. And again, Gill, terrific job. A little bit too late. That was coming down. But they know he's there. That, that to me, is something you have to pay attention to late game. Even though they've called offensive goaltending, guys are going to be thinking about that late in the game if it comes down to a close game. Look at that. Two out of 15 from the floor. 11 of 16 for the Road Musketeers. McKnight, pretty good dribble drive, just unable to give it to go. Now, even your good decisions are not going rewarded. Uh, me and my buddies that I play golf with, we call that a cellophane bridge. <laughs> that ball just will not go in. Yeah. It's an invisible cover on the rim right now for Seton Hall with only six points. That was an unforced error by Xavier. A couple of turnovers here of late, and yet they're still down 20. They've missed 14 shots and have one offensive rebound, Seton Hall. Only one. But a testament to Xavier, one and done, keeping those white uniforms off the glass. Powell giving it back to McKnight. Obiagu on the deck, Man. and again out of bounds was Kale when he tried to save it. Even when Seton Hall has numbers, that was three against one underneath on the glass, and they just cannot secure it. One of those days so far for Seton Hall, how you change that is the hardest thing to do as a player, probably even harder for the coach, because you can only call plays that the players have to go out there and execute. Well, remember, Donnie, we have officially entered uh, the dog days of the regular oh. season. It's February, and you can see that Xavier, as Gooden knocks one in, Q on Q, give them a 22-point lead, and you can see this is a quad one opportunity that the Musketeers need. They don't have one all season long. Fox College Hoops is sponsored by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Adani, as you know, this is not my first rodeo. You know what this game feels like to me? What's that? Feels like March. Maybe you're playing in Boise, Idaho. You're the four <laughs> seed and you're playing a 13. You got the early time and you come out of the gates and you're just not making shots and the other team can't miss. Yeah, and, and the other thing too, add to that is the defense. Xavier doing a great job of forcing Seton Hall into tough, tough shots. Miles Paul may be looking for some contact there, might have gotten hit, but Xavier credit. Yeah. Defending without fouling, huge for them early. To be fair, the opposition, though, in this game would uh, be yeah. far better yes, than a 13 a yeah, or a 12 seed. Yes. And that's the dilemma and for Kevin Willard is that his guys, well, you can say, well, they didn't wake up uh, early enough mm -hmm. or maybe the biorhythms aren't there. But the bottom line is they've got a tough road to hoe against a team that's got a, a purpose to And also Newark is in Idaho. Just that's I don't right. know if you, the last time you've been to Idaho. It's, it's been a while. A little bit, a little different. Yeah, a little nowadays. different. <laughs> yes, indeed. Beautiful place, though. Wonderful place to be. <laughs> And there's another rebound by wow. Carter and another quick shot from Seton Hall. And a one and done. That's just Xavier in the right place, challenging, defending without fouling. Put it into perspective here. Ty Jones, Tyreek has eight rebounds. Seton Hall as a team has three. Uh, that's a senior leading his team, and now a terrific pass. Oh, wow, what a cut and what a delivery Boy. to the good one from Tyreek Jones. 30 to 6. Don't adjust your set. That is the score, and it's been earned by the Musketeers today. And I'm sure a lot of people are thinking, well, Miles Powell, if you're just tuning in, probably has all six. He is 0 for 3, folks. This is the 10th ranked team in the country in the midst of a 10 game win streak. And at long last, Jared Roden, nothing but nylon. And they needed that to end the drought and a turnover to go with it. And that's what happens. You make a one play 
And now you compound your problem here for Xavier by a silly foul so far away from basket, just unnecessary. And it may be what Seton Hall needs to get this building into it because it is packed. Yeah. They're just waiting for something to happen so they can get behind their guys. Gooden commits the foul and the, the opportunity now for a four or five point play. The fact is, for Seton Hall to make this a game, they need at least one good run in this half. And there's another, again, yeah. these are, are, are minor things, Tim. But when you are on the floor and you feel you have momentum, you don't, you can't afford silly fouls that now slow the game down. We talked about that earlier for Seton Hall. Slowing the, the, the game down just a little bit, and that's what's happened now. A couple of silly fouls by Xavier after a three-pointer made. Let's see if Seton Hall can pay it off with another basket. Fremantle pick that one up. And that leaner goes for McKnight, so that's a five-point trip. It, it's, it's not huge but it's what gets you started it's that <laughs> that little decline when your yeah. car won't start you can just give it a little push to yeah. kick start it somehow remember that score it was 30 to 6 with 740 remaining in the half what does Seton Hall do between now and then Scruggs that runner won't go and it's run down by McKnight Patience is huge this point in the game. You're starting to feel a little bit better. Not much, but a little. And doing this with again with the power on the deck. Mahmoud Kalashvili is fouled by Tariq Jones. And this may be one of those situations where Kevin Wood is going to have to extend Sandro Mahmoud Kalashvili's minutes a little bit longer than he may have wanted to only a second game back in a long, long time. But if he's giving you all the right things, you have to leave the big fellow on the floor. Returned after missing 10 games from a broken right wrist on the non-shooting hand. And uh, the Mamba mentality and obviously still very much in our minds and daughter Gigi also there yeah. on his shoes. And you know, this is the first time we've seen one another since uh, last Sunday. Yeah. I know it's still in your heart and your soul as it is with so many others. Yeah, it's, it's still hard to, to even fathom without and yeah. he's personally tearing up and, and thinking about it. So, but everyone's representing him and extending that legacy. Scruggs with the dunk down to Jones. Gill, I think, will be guilty of the foul prior. I think that's on to the, the floor, shot. though. Yeah, it should yeah, be on the floor. I'm with you, Timmy. They're going to wave it off, and that's a good call by Tony Chiazza. Yeah, I mean, Gill, that, that's a tough one. That's a bang-bang play. So at no point, I don't care how good of a shot blocker you are, you're not going to wait for him to elevate. That's a, that is just such a heads-up play by Tyreek Jones, knowing you got the shot blocker in there, knowing he's challenged a couple that have been offensive goaltending, but getting him up in the air and drawing the foul. Well, they'll trigger in the inbounds because it was a foul on the deck prior to the shot. Tyreek's had to live with the fact that he got that uh, two-second throw-in pass and decided not to take a shot at the basket the other night in the double OT. Well, those plays are hard to draw up, though, Tim. Yeah, you know, you're in late are. game. Everyone wants to make them when they're a kid, but they're hard to yeah, they be in and, and be able to understand what kind of decision you're going to make. Scruggs is fouled. Again, with the uh, good use of the ball fake, he'll get to the free throw line. Shavar Reynolds, here's the play we're talking about here. With 2.3 left. Opting to pass it there to Fremantle. Yeah. And you only have that little time remaining. And I realize that that can happen to a young man playing the game, Donnie, but you know I have to stay with him, too. And, and I will say, if I'm his teammate, I'm telling him, listen, that wasn't the reason we lost the game. Exactly. <laughs> you know, yeah. there, were, there were probably two dozen reasons earlier in that game and probably some of them in the first half why we couldn't pull that thing off man. and if you're a good teammate that's what you do for your your leadership you say hey we're still behind you man we got a lot of games to play you saw miles powell coming back onto the floor they've made up a little bit of ground here without him as Scruggs gets that free throw to go they're now three of seven at the strike so that issue has not gone away for xavier 11 of 25 in the double overtime loss the other night 
Roden strong into a double team. Stays with it, and Mahmoud Kalashvili out the foul. Not there. Tapped away and controlled to Quinton Gooden. There's a turnover. Sandro gets in the passing lane. A little Mamu can do on the defensive yeah. end. Uh, he's been a bright spot at both ends in a game that doesn't have a lot of highlights for Seton Hall so far. And it's going to go the other way. You got to stay still. If you're setting a screen, wait for your guard. Take a look right there. You got to. You can't yeah. move into it. You know, you, you, you just, you turn, take a look right here. Watch his shoulders. Right now, he's good, Gil. But as soon as they turn to the baseline, that means he's moving into the defense. It's an illegal screen. Great call by the officials. Second foul on Romero. The lead was 24. It's down to 18. Marshall needs some help. And Kiki Tandy will provide it. Here's a blow by against Powell. Off the heel. Out of bounds. Last touch by Seton Hall. So another, we talked about how big this team is, and Ike Obiagu is out there now mm. to go along with Sandro Mambu Kalashvili. When, when tomorrow's on the bench, Ike comes in, and all he has to do is just be big and. Yeah. Now you see it, another one of those plays that are unnecessary if you're Xavier. These are times when you have to keep your foot on the gas. And by doing that, it doesn't mean just continuing to score. It means to make, make the right plays, be solid. You almost have to be more fundamentally yeah. sound when you get a big lead early because you know more times than not, you're not going to hold that. Not in this conference, not on the road. That's a giveaway foul, really, by Jones. And gives him two, and it means he has to sit. So Fremantle comes in for him. And he's joined by Carter, Marshall, Scruggs, and Tandy, the five on the deck. Powell and McKnight with Obiagu, Mamu Kalashvili, and Jared Roden, the five on the floor for Seton Hall. Roden, he loves that spot. He loves that spot. That's where he hit the big one against Butler, you might recall, that helped propel Seton Hall through this 10-game win streak. Kevin Willard told us before the game he was the best player in the summer by far. I mean, he had made the, the greatest strides and was playing better than everybody. Well, this is a 10-1 run, and Marshall ends it with that putback. That's a great job by Najee Marshall. You almost forgot that he was on the floor. He hasn't really gotten a lot of touches. You know, the last few minutes, he stays in there. Nice little putback. Well, the Pirates have gotten what they needed, though. Good run. And Miles Powell now is in the column with that finger roll. And the 24-point lead is down to 15. And you have to imagine even that layup right there will get Miles Powell going a little bit. Doesn't take a lot for a big-time scorer to, to get heated up. Mentally, when you've lost five out of six, too, doesn't start creeping into your mind even now. Hey, we were up 24. Now we've lost some of this lead. Right. Well, listen, they, they, the attention to detail has picked up for Seton Hall. Najee Marshall, though, says, hey, don't forget about me. Nice little putback. Never forget about a Marshall, man. It's impossible <laughs> to forget about us. And then at the other end, Miles Powell trying to get his team back into this. Hey, I'm Mike Hill. Coming up on the Jeep Grand Cherokee Halftime Report, Casey and Lab will tell us what Seton Hall needs to do to climb out of this hole they've gotten themselves into. And can Wisconsin overcome a tumultuous week heading into their battle with Michigan State today? It's all coming up at the half. Tim and Donnie, we'll see you then. All right, Mike, thank you. And, uh, oh, by the way, the storyline has changed. Even in the first 20 minutes, it's changed. <laughs> We touched on this. You see the numbers on Miles Powell. He has been notoriously a slow starter, but what a finisher. Well, you know, like that. I said, you, 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 the numbers are right there, and it's just in games in general. It's not against Xavier. It's just, and I think he's just one of those kids who likes to get his teammates involved early. He likes to read the defense, see how they're going to play him. 
I think sometimes when you start games and they know you're the go-to guy, you'll see double teams early. You'll see, a, you know, a, a box in one, triangle in two. Whereas those usually aren't implemented late game. They're usually not brought in second half because the other teams start to get a little bit more comfortable. I tell you right now, though, they're going to need in this last three and a half to shorten and, and to, to, to lessen this lead. Powell off the front iron that time. Scrubs pulls down the long rebound. Dogged by McKnight. There's Carter. Marshall, good positioning by Marshall against those trees in blue. And a quick kick out. Tandy. And again on the offensive glass, Xavier. Marshall again stays wow. on the rim. They had three opportunities at point blank range, but Seton Hall stayed with them. Roby again. They would have three Musketeers fighting for that rebound. I tell you, Travis Steele got their attention on the defensive glass. I'm telling you, this, I mean, <laughs> to see these guys out here battling both ways, Xavier knows Seton Hall probably has a run in them. Every time that shot goes up for Seton Hall, but Xavier, they have a comfort level right now. They do. Carter not there, out of bounds. Mm. Last touch by Scruggs. There's a lot of opportunities here. Yeah, open shot there. Najee Marshall keeping it alive. Good defense without fouling. You get the swing out. I mean, this is hey, this is college basketball at its best right now. Xavier O for their last five and up 15 despite nine turnovers and three of seven shooting at the line. And that's a reach-in foul against Marshall. Powell really good at inducing those, but now he definitely got his hand in there, picks up his first. 24 was the largest lead at 30 to 6. At this stage, what would uh, Xavier be happy with at halftime, knowing that they were once up 30 to 6? Oh, they're they're happy that they've done a pretty darn good job on Miles Powell. But I think a little bit of that is fool's gold because yeah, I, is. he hasn't yeah. been forcing anything. They haven't been running a lot of plays at him. But if you're the coach, if you're Travis Stewart, say, listen, good job on Powell because you want to keep them positive. You want to reinforce. That's a part of the reason why we it's playing the game within yeah. the game, Timmy. Conventional wisdom is that from a scouting report standpoint, you're all hyped up. You do a nice job defensively for 20 minutes. But then those second half legs maybe aren't the same. And, and the sharpness of the mind yeah. starts to dwindle a little bit for these guys. Well, you see, it's a 14 to 3 scoring run. Something you were prophetic is that had to happen before the end of this half. That's going to be a foul. That's a tough one. And an, oh, by the way, the court, it was actually the court monster that got him. He tripped. <laughs> I mean, McKnight just tripped on the court and will pick up this foul and save really what would have been a turnover and a, an opportunity here. I think McKnight was trying yeah. to think, should I dive for this? Or should I stay on my feet? And he got caught in between and, and had a little trip there. Now, this could be really a four point swing. Ball would have been, at worst case, Seton Hall's on the offensive end of the floor. Okay, listen, Maybe that, even a turnover and a layup. And now you've got two free throws coming in. Nothing is given here at the foul line for Xavier. I don't care who's at the line. They've just really struggled. And again, he's 74% on the year. Yeah. Too. Sometimes you start to overthink, you, you know, even if you haven't missed your teammates have you start to that starts to seep in Three out of eight now as a team at the line Mamu Kavashvili Ooh, the iron unkind and it's pulled down by Carter well, That was halfway down the cylinder yeah, just a, a little flat But you're right halfway down and those are shots that usually fall when you're at home Marshall off the spin move, beautifully done. Shows glimpses of that game being able to transcend, you know, to that next level and being able to, to carry over. He's got nine on the day. Tyrese Samuel back on the floor along with Roden. There's a beautiful cut by McKnight off the feed from Mamou Kalashvili. And I would have loved for Roden to shoot that three. He was open. That's the other thing. You, you gotta, you can't be afraid. You gotta continue to stay aggressive, even though you've missed shots early. 
Roden has to shoot that ball from the wing. Listen, you're trying to throw it inside. I get it. You get something out of it. You get to the foul line. But right now, he has been the guy who's knocked down a few from outside. Uh, McKnight has just been incredible during this win streak. Uh, more specifically, in the last eight games, okay, 63 assists, only 19 turnovers. And uh, his performance against Butler back on January 15th was exemplary. He had 11 points, 13 assists, just one turnover in that game. And you might recall, that was a huge matchup. Butler was really rolling, surprising the country, was number five that night. And Seton Hall took them down. Well, he is the definition of Seton Hall basketball, Quincy McKnight. Marshall, ooh, a little scoop to the hoop, and it rolled around the rim and out. Showed some of his dexterity there. Here's Powell on the other end. This is the shot you want to see Roden take. And that's why he's made a couple. Nice little shot fake, and I, I guarantee you, Miles Powell's going to tell him the same thing. You got to stay aggressive, young fella. We need you. If I'm your teammate, I'm telling you, we need you. Look at this shot fake. Beautiful basketball. See, no. Creep it back in. This weekend, college basketball is teaming up with Autism Speaks to raise awareness, understanding, and acceptance of autism, which affects one in 68 children in the United States. Coaches, broadcasters, and officials are wearing Autism Speaks blue puzzle piece pins. And to learn more, visit autismspeaks.org slash coaches. Here's an interesting note when trailing at the half. Xavier 13 and 0 and when leading at halftime and Seton Hall 7 and 3 when trailing at the half and we saw them down 13 against St. John's just a couple of weeks ago uh, across the river at Madison Square Garden Powell turned on the Jets and game set and match we'll see what happens today. Oh that's a travel yeah. The identity for Xavier, even though they got off to a big lead, it's, it's not apparent. I, I, you have a hard time of trying to figure out who they really are. You had your power forward there handling the ball in the middle of the court. No sense of who the ball handler should be or where the leadership is. Right now, Xavier's going to be happy to just get out of this half. <laughs> Remember, as I said, at the Garden, they were down 13. 12 after this from Powell. Not to be. Fremantle comes away with it. So they'll lead by a dozen. But it's not as if this is a, an uncharted water situation for Seton Hall. A lot of game left. Lots of game left. 17 to 5 in the final 722 for the Hall. That's the end of the half. It's 35 to 23. Mike Hill is standing by in L.A. for the Chief Halftime Report. He and a lot of big time company coming your way right after this. <laughs> 35 to 23. The Xavier Musketeers lead number 10 and scorching Seton Hall until this first morning of the month of February. Things have cooled considerably as you look at our first half stats sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee. Only 24% from the floor. Noteworthy, the rebounding story, 30 to 9, and yet only down by 12. And Donnie, that seems to be the real key, the second chance well, point. You, you got to stress the positives if you're Kevin Willard at Seton Hall, and that's a bright spot. Only down 12. You didn't shoot the ball well. I thought Xavier's second opportunities were just were phenomenal. They, they kept coming. There was a, a second wave, a third wave. Ten second chance points was big for them. They're going to need more of that. The problem now for Xavier is everyone's kind of settled in a little right. bit, and the, the crowd is into it now. I don't think Miles Powell is going to have another half. Statistically speaking, I think if you look at the numbers, just not what he does. He steps up in the second half. They're going to have to pay more attention to where he is on the floor. But the same effort from Xavier. Well, the bigs, Romero Gill has struggled. So too has Powell. You look at the numbers, the, lead, the guys leading the way, Najee Marshall, Tyreek Jones for the X-Men, Powell, and Romero Gill. Again, no points or blocks for him in 11 minutes. And Gill and Obiagu a combined zero points, one rebound. So, you know, and Obiagu has played pretty well 
when Gill has not been in there of late. Now, Mahmoud Kalish really is eating up a few of those minutes, and understandably so, and we're underway here in the second. It'll be interesting to see how Xavier mentally holds up, trying to hold on to this lead, and right away, a foul and the bucket to open the second half. And I think Mantle gets number two. I think Jared Roden's problem right now is there are more people around him that believe he's better than he believes he is. <laughs> and that's when early in the, the game, you know, Miles Powell will go over to him and, and almost yell at him to say, shoot the ball. You know, teammates are telling him, you got to be more aggressive. And it's, well, that's a great place to be for a good player. You don't believe you're as good as you are because you continue to work. But he's got to know his importance in this game today. I mentioned earlier that win against Butler when they were number five in the country on the road, a part of the streak. It was Roden that made the big shot, and Powell was a decoy off an inbounds pass with two on the shot clock. Well, that was the catalyst. Powell, by the way, picks up that foul, his first. But you're right, it's almost as if his teammates understood after that how great a player he was. He did. <laughs> right. I think he's still figuring that out. Yeah. Which is a, it's, it tells you a little bit about how good of a kid he is. Marshall working one on one against Kale. Mm, he's in rhythm today. Woo! That is special. The handle, six seven length when he pulls up off the dribble. He's got 11, and the lead is back up to 11 for Xavier. Gill working pick and roll, but Kale takes it off the curl. It's not there. And the rebound run down by Freeman. I think he may have gotten on the inline. He did. And the ball will stay on this end of the floor. Yeah, this is just look through the legs, the hesitation into the left hand and net. I mean, that is a uh, big time move by Najee Marshall. Forces. I think Kale earlier before the, the out of bounds play, I thought Kale was a little premeditated. Maybe hasn't gotten the touches he's wanted. But then again, you know, Roden to the basket. That's a good play. Going to the basket. I think that the issue that Seton Hall runs into at times is they do a lot of, and I know it's a part of their offense. There's a lot of east to west basketball, meaning dribble handoff towards the sideline, dribble handoff coming back, looking for those angles. And then when you finally get the angle, you have to force it. Whereas Xavier in this game, the lanes have opened up and it's offered them the opportunities to get to the free throw line. Tyreek from Vermont Academy, Bluefield, Connecticut, as uh, documented by Bobby a moment ago. There you see the career summary in this season, what he's been able to produce. And still the issues at the free throw line to convert twice is a, a big story if you're Zay a Xavier fan right now. Jones with five points, nine boards in this game. And he's also made some excellent passes to go along with that. McKnight off the bounce. It's interesting how Najee Marshall, he pressures the heck out of Miles Powell, relaxes just a little bit, when he switches on to Quincy McKnight and pays for it. And some 2 2 1 full court pressure coming. It surprised him a little bit, didn't it, Donald? They were screaming for 10 seconds. I mean, Kevin Willard still is. Yeah. Now, this is now as close as it's been since the score was 11 to 2. And remember, that largest lead came. With 7.40 remaining in the first half, it was 30 to 6. That's too much for Scrubs. You can't mess around with the basketball, trying to play around with it behind your back with Quincy McKnight in front of you. Now, this Xavier team has some guys who like to pound the ball, but you can't put it down too many times against defenders like Seton Hall has. I, li I like this substitution here, getting Kiki Tandy in. You know, he, he, he tends to ignite his team when he comes on the floor offensively. Scruggs. Oh, what a shot. And that was tough. Boy, big time. That was much needed, not just for the score, 
and those purposes, but for Scruggs himself, not a guy who's going to step back and, and knock shots down on you. Yeah, up against the clock the way they were, that was a huge bucket, even though it's this early. Powell to step back three. A lot of them short. Hasn't had a lot of shots, but there are a lot of them that have been front rim. Here's Jones, isolated against Gill. Goes with the spin move. Oh, it's a drop step spinner. 43 to 29. That was a huge maneuver by Tyree Ooh, Jones. That's just using your strength. Against the taller Gill. Backdoor cut. Kale on the receiving end from Powell. That's why his all-four game is so appreciated here. I like the no call by the official. No flop call. No offensive call. Play on. Yeah. Sometimes that, to me, a lot of that's the best call a official can, can make is not calling anything. Marshall, again off the bounce, over Kale. This is a matchup that he is absolutely loving going up against Miles Kale. He's very comfortable against him, and it's 46 to 31. Lead back up to 15. Xavier four for four from the floor. This half, McKnight with an answer. That's twice now. Quincy McKnight has done a great job of stopping behind the screen. They're giving him too much space. He's made them pay from uh, the top of the key. But a scintillating start to this half, though. Yeah, this is what Xavier needs. You get a big lead, they eat into it. You come out the same presence of mind as you had to start the game. The Muskies, they are <laughs> loving it. Tonight, it's a 12-round welterweight showdown as Dennis Ugas takes on your Dennis Ugas takes on Mike Dallas Jr. The action starts at 6.30 Eastern on FS1 and the Fox Sports app. Your Dennis. Not mine, yours. Not mine. I thought maybe I had an appointment <laughs> that I'd forgotten about. We welcome you back. It's 46 to 34. And uh, Romero Gill is uh, just an outstanding young man, both on the floor for his Pirates, also in the classroom as well. Academic Ambitions, sponsored by SoFi. Get your money right, all in one app. Social and behavioral science major. The 2019-20 uh, Men's Basketball Oversight Committee. Our congratulations to Romero on his job, both on the floor and off. There needs to be just an oversight committee just for you alone. Just a Tim Brando <laughs> oversight committee. Right. I do need supervision. <laughs> yeah, I do need supervision. <laughs> it's off to my wife for 41 years. She'll tell you that, too. <laughs> oh. Powell trying to get it done uh -oh. himself. Look out. Uh-oh. Suddenly that uh, furnace could light up, and you know what could happen. His first tray, by the way, he's one of six from downtown. That stat could change between now and game's end. And the pressure just it, it, it alleviated a little bit. There's a little bit more airspace, and that's why you got that shot off. Tough shot there by Jones against Gill. Really forced that one. And with plenty of time remaining, Seton Hall getting their mojo going against the Musketeers. Dodgy Marshall slaps that one away. All he needs is a little bit of room, Timmy. Just a little bit of space gets you back on your heels. No one wants to step up. That's a late contest. I mean, anywhere in the building is Miles Powell range. Forty-six to thirty-seven, and Naji Marshall has really done his best to keep the X-Men in control. I, it's so easy to do highlights over my namesake. I just, I love, never, never get that last name on on the replays enough. But last time in this building, he had twenty-eight points. He's really doing a phenomenal job. Ten field goals. He's, in my opinion, he's a player that needs, you know, fifteen, sixteen shots a game. You know, to really put the team on his back, but he's just a t he, like they say in New England, he's hard to get. He's God, just yeah. one of those guys with the length, his ability to handle the basketball and, and get you off kilter. And they're going to need more more of that in this second half, obviously. Yeah. 
By the way, that hide to God would have come from uh, your old coach, I think, at some point. I think Calhoun may have said that. And a few other not things to nicely. you. Not that nicely, yeah, not that and nicely. And a few though. other things to you. Yeah, yeah. George Blaney's uh, ears are still ringing. I had a lot of nicknames. This time. <laughs> Calhoun. Maybe can to get that one to go. And we've got a foul. Hey, those empty possessions just, they really, they sting as a coach. You, you spent the entire time out drawing something up. Now, listen, they're not all going to work, but you have to go out there and try to at least produce something. I think mean, the good thing that happened was it was a dead ball. Now you get a chance to set up defensively to see the The first foul on San Roma move, Thomas Billy. By the way, the hall was still with zero second chance points. Fremantle, an air ball, but Jones corrals it, gets it to Scrubs. Now they'll play a little two-man game. He challenges Gill again, and he wins this time. Went yeah. right into his chest yeah. to create the space. Yeah, and if Gill didn't stand in there so strongly, it would have been an offensive foul. It clearly was a, a shoulder or a left elbow to the gut. Still no second chance points. Uh, Gill takes that feed and knows what to do with it. It's a great play because Initially, I think he wanted to go with the reverse, but Scruggs ran to block, and I think he might have gotten it if Gill didn't change his mind and go same side with the layup. Travis Steele made a big deal about rebounding to us today. Felt like he had to win that story. Well, he's not only doing that, but the second chance points that have come as a result have been a real difference, plus the points in the paint advantage. And there's another turnover by Xavier. The little things are returned to Cinder by Marshall. Now numbers. Naji pulls up. Count And a foul. I tell you, the sense of urgency that Xavier has played with from the tip, I don't know if I've seen that in the four or five games we've done of theirs live in person. I mean, this is what is getting them keeping the lead in this game and getting them to that point of confidence that no matter what happens, no matter what Seton Hall throws at them, they are going to come back at you. Well, Donnie, they're playing like the team that was predicted to be third in the Big East Conference. Absolutely. I mean, preseason, this team, with what they had coming back and a crop of young talent and the transfer from Ohio, you, they were considered one of the favorites in this league. And you can lose a lot of close games, and they have. Uh, their, their record is not indicative of their potential. This does not look like a team that is, has lost five of their last six games. Mamu Kalashvili, beautiful baseline maneuver over Fremantle. You see the versatility in his game. I like that for a couple of reasons. You, you get him involved, you keep him engaged, you're going to go down, post him up. It slows the game down just a little bit. You can get your guys set if their double team comes to be able to pass out of it. Marshall, by the way, with eight second half points for the Musketeers. So number 13 in blue is still feeling it. There he is, this time passing it up. Gooden with a dribble drive, high off the window, and Jones tips it in. Again, Gill stepping up, maybe he gets a deflection, but on that back side, his man with another tip in. We saw two of those in the first half. Jones with a double-double. He's got 11 and 11 now. McKnight off the heel. And a whistle. That foul will be a blockout foul against Zach Freeman. So when you're playing against a shot blocker, keep a, a, an eye on Tariq Jones right there. Now Gill's going to go up to block it. Lead you that whole weak side because Mamu Kellis really doesn't be back or he doesn't get in front of you. A couple of those in the first half is what helped them get that big lead, Xavier. Three fouls on Fremantle to go along with the five points. Zach has uh, been a strong complimentary player today. There's Jones blocking out on Romero Gill again. I would love to see them run some down screens or something along the baseline for Miles Powell. Get some some three ball corner pocket shots for him instead of those long 25, 26 footers. You know, he can make them. But I think the more you force the defense to work, the better off he is. Cushman goes crossover, rejected by Gill. He deflected that one on the way up. And that pass kicked away. It was going to be a beautiful one from Powell on a bounce pass to Kale, but it was kicked out of there. Everything working on, on, on all cylinders for Xavier there. You get back, you know, you get a deflection. Who cares if it's a kick? It's, it, you, you save a layup. 
And they're forcing Miles Powell to take those long jump shots because their defense has just been so stingy. After Stephen Hall goes to its bench, gets a little smaller. Travis Steele decides to get Najee Marshall a quick breath before we get to the under 12 timeout. Because he knows he's going to need him for the stretch run. That foul against Bryce Moore, his second. Shabar Reynolds will trigger it in. Powell to Obiagu, and he's fouled. Is that three man again? If so, it's four. I believe it is. So that's the fourth on Zach Freeman. This is how unselfish Miles Powell is. He could have easily come off of that screen and the out of bounds under and shot that ball. Instead, he sees the floor. But he makes a basketball play. This kid, and Kevin Willis, Kevin Willard told us before the game that he makes everyone better. He just does. We talked to Travis Steele in his locker room, and he said the same, same thing, thing about Miles Powell. He makes everyone on the floor better. You cannot say that about a lot of the great players in college basketball, Cassius Winston. After that, I mean, there are some really good players at the top when you're talking, you know, national player of the year type level stuff. But those two guys, head and shoulders above, as far as making guys on their team better. I'm with you, and I'll also say this. There have been games that I've seen Powell play that when he's been better than maybe the last time I saw him play. But I've never seen him play a poor game. I've not seen one that what you call a really bad outing from him. Great players clean up other players' messes. <laughs> yep. they, they fill in the gaps, and that's that's what he's done all season long, Miles Powell. Here comes that pressure, a near turnover. They have pride, they pride themselves here at Seton Hall on defense, and I think during that time when Powell was out and they had to play without him for a couple of weeks, they really became, they created a culture of defense. And Timmy, That's I, a lot. I just want to back up. I know the crowd was into it. He steps over it. The ball goes over and then back. It's over and back. Yeah. The entire body, body with the ball has to go over. So 11:35 yeah. yeah. remaining. This is just effort here. Go and clean it up, Tyreek. Jones, a walking double-double, which means you can show your muscles. Oh. We welcome you back to Big East Basketball. It's sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee. 53-43, the Musketeers with the lead. What a season for basketball in Jersey. How about what's, what Steve Peichel has done with Rutgers, Donnie Marshall, 16-5. and five. Their net ranking is 18. Seton Hall, by the way, lost to them by 20, albeit without Miles Powell. That was the first game he missed due to concussion protocol. I got a chance to see Rutgers at Maryland on Wednesday night. I, I, I can't wait for that. They, they're absolutely yeah. fantastic at the rock. But beyond that, they're playing tremendous basketball it's in the It's easy Big for me to root for them because Steve Peichel, the UConn alum, showed me yeah. around on my recruiting trip <laughs> a long time ago. And one of the reasons why I went to UConn, and I'm just so happy for the, what he's developed there. And he, it wasn't always that easy for him at the rack. He's, he's really put them on the map, done a, a, a phenomenal job, and he's, he's paid his dues, Steve so, Peichel. Somewhere in the heavens, Chuck Daly is smiling, too. <laughs> and I remember that. Hubie Brown's great quote to me many, many years ago. There are two kinds of basketball. There's basketball and basketball in Jersey. <laughs> Here's Powell working on Marshall. His quickness to get around the bigger defender, and you saw the end result. He can call his number almost at will from this point on. Hard to believe they have just been dominated on the glass, no second chance points, and yet down only eight. Potter to Jones. Use the ball fake to his benefit. Jones did a phenomenal job from the inbounds all the way to his bucket. Did not leave the middle of the floor, and that is the weak spot for a defense. You get to the middle of a press, catch the ball, now all bets are off. That's how you break the pressure. He ends up being rewarded with the dunk. 13 and 12 now for Jones. Hale in traffic up against Jones. That's an offensive foul. Yeah. Player control, it'll go the other way. And this is, right now, the advantage is 
to Marshall because he's long. He can contest it late. Miles Powell turns that into advantage me. I'm going to put on the floor. I don't know if you have the foot speed to stay with me, and there's no help behind. And then Tyreek Jones, how about that? That's how you use the dribble. So many times, bigs catch the ball two feet from the basket. You don't need to dribble. In that case, you have to get the big up in the air. Easy finish for Jones. 36 to 15, the rebounding story. But Seton Hall still in it after that pilfer and one. McKnight in the midday gets it done for the Hall. You can't play around with the basketball with these guys. I mean, that's just Kale's length at 6'6", and then Quinton McKnight, look at this, switches hands because he feels the pressure with his strong right hand. Watch, this is beautiful. He moves the ball over, finishes with the left. Second and assist only to Charlie Moore of the ball. By the way, speaking of really good teams that records belie how good they are, how about, how about the ball? They've got some outstanding non-conference wins and only one inside the league. It just tells you so much. Jones from Marshall. And uh, Romero Gill went to sleep that time. Yeah, just lack of communication. He you know, bigs are going to, they'll go where you tell them to go, and as a guard, you have to be able to direct them, and he had no direction there. He was in no man's land. The lead remains 10 with nine and a half to play. Roden on the pop-up. Little hitch in the getting up there, and it's pulled down by Jones, and he is going to be one stat sheet stuffer today. At any time, if you're, you're a young person and you like to drive to the basket, anytime there's contact, finish high. Always finish high. Gooden with a teardrop, too strong. Hail the rebound. Now, so many times guys get contact and they just don't get the ball up over the rim. Oh, the iron wow. tantalizingly unkind. It stayed on the rim and Jones the run out from Marshall again. A huge four-point swing right there. I I don't think I've been this impressed. Actually, I know I have not been this impressed with the effort of Xavier in all the games I've done this year. They are really doing all the little things. Powell in traffic. Oh. Rolls off the rim again, and Marshall comes out of there with it. Numbers if you want it. And withstanding this run is big for Xavier with this much time remaining, don't you think? I mean, they have withstood a heck of a run and have now asserted themselves and are back up by a dozen. More importantly, the atmosphere in the building. Xavier has probably, unbeknownst to them, they have kept it quiet in here. They're just playing basketball. Keeps the crowd out of it. And Tyreek Jones has found his way through this game. 17 points. You come into this game and you think, you know what, he's undersized. Does that sum it up right there? When Powell, your player of the year candidate, misses and then that happens on the other end, that's a five-point swing. Xavier's last 18 points by either Jones or Marshall. They have collaborated very well. 17 points each. Here's Mahmoud Kalashvili working on Carter. Oh, tough shot. Gonna need more of that. I mean, the balance, you turn, you square the shoulders up, the one-hand finish. Powell giving chase to Gooden. Taylor no, 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 no. Marshall is sort of a point forward, a stretch four or five. He's getting the job done right here. He's been devastating. Fouled this time on his way up as Gill reached in. 7.37 remaining. When your best player has one of these happen, Donnie, oh boy. Wonder where I came up with the line? That's it right there. Fox College Hoops is sponsored by Ford. Built Ford Proud. Our score here at the Rock, the Prudential Center, 59-49. Xavier with the lead. And the head coach of the 10th ranked team in the country, Kevin Willard, in the huddle. Once you press, get back in your zone. This pick, well, how, why is the pick and roll? It's a single tag. This guy's got to help a little bit. This guy's got to be off. You can't stay at home on the guy.
And this is what he's talking about. Keep an eye on the big fella Gill here. This, this ball is going to come this way. Two guys will go with the ball, and that leaves the backside, if you will, the paint exposed as we run it. Two guys step up. McKnight's coming up to the wing. It leaves Tyreek Jones wide open in the paint. That is a couple of things. It's what Coach Willard said. Two guys are going with the ball, but that's also the ball handler dragging you. You know, you're not sure what he's going to do, so you stay a click longer, and then it's it, it, in this in a game like this, a split second can hurt you. Seton Hall this year defensively, we touched on how it became their mantra, particularly after Powell was hurt. They allow 39 percent from the floor, but today Xavier 54 percent from the floor. Now they're struggling at the free throw line. As usual, only 11 for 25 in the double OT loss to Marquette. Marshall gets that one to go. And Tyreek Jones uh, getting a brief rest, which is important for them for the stretch run. I think we may have had a clock malfunction off the inbounds, and they noticed it right away. And they're going to go make sure that second or two or will be saved. And in a game like this, every second definitely important so it'll be 737 on the clock rather than seven minutes and 30 seconds well, here's the thing the, the, the scores table and the, they got to stay alert too just because <laughs> the ball comes in the, the clock doesn't start until yeah. someone touches the ball yeah by the way Tyreek Jones must love this building last year he went for 18 and 15 today he's got 17 and 14 with seven and change remaining well, I told you his mama's here. She, yeah. she drove up from Connecticut. That's Down, my baby. Say, That's my baby. <laughs> <laughs> McKnight. An acrobatic maneuver. Did Fremont Mantle pick up his fifth? He may have. Great job by Quincy McKnight to hang in the air and extend the ball out to get the contact. I think if he went up quicker, he may not have gotten that foul call. Well, they lose that Fremantle, who's got such a great future. He's a gym rat. Travis Steele just loves the kid, but what this necessitates is Jones coming in a little sooner than anticipated. And I, I don't think that's an issue at all for Xavier, especially the game that Tyree Jones is having. If you think there are players that still slip through the cracks, you would be right. This is one such example. Quincy McKnight, Bridgeport, Connecticut, by way of Sacred Heart. Very lightly recruited and uh, man oh man, what a addition he's been to the seat ball program. You know, sometimes guys like Quincy McKnight, and, and that his size and his position, you know, he's such a defensive stalwart. They need a couple years to grow, and that's what Sacred Heart gave him. Helped him transition really well to this level. McKnight with 15 points, 10 of them this half. That one deflected by McKnight. And he starts a turnover. Mamu can do and one. That is seven steals for Seton Hall, and they know how to make you pay when you're fooling around with that basketball. I mean, Mamo Kellis really has done a terrific job. Only a set game back. You, you called it after missing 10. Looks like he hasn't, he hasn't missed a beat. But that was, again, an example of what McKnight has. The definition of blue guy. Just stepped in, disrupted that play, and Kellis, Mamo Kellis really was able to clean up. And when we talked about him being the definition of seat all basketball, it's toughness, def defend you, can ugly it up a little bit, if you will. I mean, that, that's who this Seton Hall team is. They're By the way, gonna, it's not going to be beautiful all the Kevin, time. That's Kevin Willard basketball. <laughs> that's it. He'll tell you in a heartbeat, ugly is good. Ugly it up all you yeah. want. He'll take it. And it goes back to those essentials that you touched on at the very top of the show. What makes a team this good to win? Ten You're not going to bring your best every night or every afternoon. And clearly in the first half, this Seton Hall team did not, but if you got enough artillery yeah. in different areas, you're never done. You got to be able to check all the boxes, and, and they do that. Eight nothing bench points for Seton Hall. That's certainly been a catalyst in the second half. 
trailed by 24 with 740 remaining in the first half. Down seven now. That's Carter with the ball fake. Dribbled right into the roadblock of Gill. Nice feed. Moore up against it. On the heel. Jones again. Jones again. Xavier has more of Jones than Seton Hall can handle. And that's with four guys over 6'10". I got to be honest. Tyreek Jones is a grown man. He is playing grown-up basketball today. 16 rebounds. Seton Hall, 17 rebounds. And, and, and again, wow. I thought you were a little surprised Woo. earlier today when you asked Travis Steele about you know what was needed and he said we well, got out rebound him and he said well you mean you mean really out rebound yeah, just be even yeah. or he's like no no yeah <laughs> that's what they're doing i don't think he meant one player out <laughs> right to be your opponent well the tie's a little loosened but to this point his team has uh, certainly been buttoned up they haven't and, and here's the thing for seton hall they, get, they need to uh, i think they got to start to you gotta get things going a little bit here with six and a half to play. Xavier has not shown any signs that they're going to let down. Every time Seton Hall has cut it to seven or thereabouts, Marshall and Jones have made a play. Those two have made a play. Gill comes up empty. They're in the bonus now. That was a one and one after the foul on the other end. You see the free throw shooting short. Once again, Xavier would have a comfortable lead if they were just shooting at a 70% clip at the line. Tandy stays in the air long enough to induce the foul. I think this is what plagues a lot of teams late game when you don't have a true point guard. And I think that's what Xavier's run into. And when they've had those difficulties is, is really no true point guard to get guys in their spots to, to be secure with the basketball. You can throw guys into that position. But unless you have a true point guard who understands where everyone should be on the floor and when to take a shot and when to pass the ball, you're going to have those holes and sometimes those questions late game. Hill got that foul and again to further show the free throw woes. Today, just 50% at the line. A bit better than that after the 10 day mate. But Gill now with three fouls. Just over six remaining, and once again, the lead is down to seven. McKnight on the dribble drive. He's fouled. The lead is 11. I beg your pardon. If I said seven, I misspoke. And we've got an injured pirate, and that is McKnight. Cannot hear a pin drop in this building. right here that you can put other guys in to score and rebound I, I just he has the intangibles Quincy McKnight that you just can't play without you, know, you can see the concern on the faces of the coaches and, and players especially all over on the bench they're not even going to attempt to bend that left knee and if he can't stay in this is Xavier will be able to pick a free throw shooter yeah from Seton Hall to shoot. They really it's tough to see. I really feel for a young man that's meant as much to this team as Quincy McKnight has. Now senior transfer. And as we mentioned, a real blue guy for this club. Here it is. Oh yeah. Can't get that left knee out or left foot out from underneath him. 
Tyreek Jones knew right away, too. I just, you know, it's one of those things, free throw shooting, that I'm not sympathetic to why, you know, when guys are bad, because it's the easiest thing to work on. And wow. it, it, it doesn't a take one. a lot. You know, you get in the gym, you stand there, it makes really no effort other than going down and up. <laughs> I just can't understand. I've never understood why so many poor free throw shooters. Well, and guys who can shoot the ball. Absolutely. Carter with the dump down to Jones. Once again, Xavier answering a run from Seton Hall. Good offensive Wait, there. Yep, offensive foul on Carter. They had cut it to seven, and then Seton Hall sees Xavier answer again with a couple of quick buckets and the lead back up to 11. That foul on Carter, his third. Miles Kale will come in to relieve Sandro. Well, I would expect, like everyone else in the building, for the guy who we really haven't said much about to, to step up in this this last five and a half minutes or so, and that's Miles Powell. Yep. Been very, very quiet in this half. Only, all game, but especially this half. Only nine in the game. And with McKnight out, he really needs to become more of a factor. Jones swats that one away. Seton Hall will have it with 14 to shoot. I, I just, I can't say enough about Tyreek Jones in a game today where it's all about Biggs being able to step out and shoot threes for him to be six eight six nine and just a powerhouse down low says a lot about his belief in himself and his work ethic. Off the curl, not to be. Another yeah. front rimmer. Yep. Paul Scruggs the rebound. How big would this be for Xavier today, though, if they can hang on, get this win? Their best road win at TCU. One in seven, quad one, and that one win is TCU. They were. There's 65 right now, and it's one through 75 on the road for quad one. This this would just be absolutely the signature win within the league that can help them out in terms of the selection committee. Uh, our friend Mike DeCorsi and his bracketology will more than likely illustrate it in coming weeks. Seton needs to, to run something or put that ball in Miles Powell's hand. Because right now, they're just searching out shots. you got to run some, some down screens. There's got to be some dribble handoffs. You know, some, some drive and kicks. Well, six times in this half, Donnie, the hall has closed to within seven or eight, but no closer. And a lot of that goes back to digging yourself such a hole. You know, being down 24 is a little more than, say, being down by 13 or 14. Yeah. Wide open, Tandy. Wrong guy to leave open. Yeah. Best shooter on this team for Xavier by far. They're, They're beginning really to feel it. it. They're beginning to feel it now. And by the way, it's tough for anyone to see their teammate go down. But the manner in which they saw Quincy McKnight go down must be also weighing on the minds of many of these Seton Hall players. No question about it. The lead catapults to 14 again for the Musketeers. Scruggs running by Roden, and he walks. Got to always check the shooter, right? Listen, you got to find a guy named Kiki. <laughs> you make your pay pay. All right, coming up in the second game of our doubleheader on Fox Big Ten all time assist leader Cassius Winston in Michigan State going up against the Wisconsin team that's dealing with a couple of issues here and there. It's coming up right after you're done there in Newark. Tim and Donnie. All right, Mike, thank you. Here, Xavier trying to pull off their biggest win of the season on the road against the 10th ranked Seton Hall Pirates. And here's today's hardest working player, sponsored by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Only pay for what you need. But the, the game today is really hard. It's all about the guards and being able to shoot threes and handle the ball off the dribble. Well, Tyreek Jones has taken it back and said, you know what? This is my game today. He's dominated from the start without really then calling any plays for him. 
He has been sensational. His work ethic is just second to none today. In so many respects, as you look at that line, 19, 9 of 10, 16 rebounds, and 4 blocks. And I mean, these are numbers that are just incredible, both in the league and across the country. In terms of double-doubles, he's at the top 10 in the nation. But how you roll with a full cup of success versus a sense of desperation, I think we've seen both. I mean, Seton Hall in this incredible run of theirs, you knew maybe a cloaker was out there for them. But Xavier's had a lot to do with the disjointed nature of their performance today. And, it, and here's another situation where they just, the defense has been so good for Xavier. There's really no place to go. They're blanketing. I got to give Najee Marshall not just credit on the offensive end, but defensively he's done a great job of staying in front of Miles Powell. Tough looks. Just not allowing him any daylight. Carter against the pressure. And the layup rolls off. But a foul spotted underneath. And then just take a look at, at Marshall right here. Goes over the, the screen. I mean, this has been him all game long. Look at it. Even when he's there, he's, he's touching. He's staying connected. He knows where Miles Powell is on the floor at all times. All game long. In, in many respects, we oftentimes wonder at this time of the year where scouting reports are, what you need to do to match up. You know, this, this number that Xavier's pulled on Powell, now he's missed some shots that normally he would make. But have, have, have they done anything particular that would be considered a blueprint on how to check Miles Powell? It, it, get an NBA body in front of him yep. that Najee Marshall has. The problem is there aren't a lot of NBA bodies <laughs> in the Big East this year that can play on the perimeter. Shavar Reynolds with a much-needed three to cut it to 11. Three minutes left. And again, the pressure coming. And a bump from Reynolds. He'll pick up the foul. Again, really, th this this may be a wise choice, though, to put them on the line, yeah, don't you think? Yeah, and, and this is a team that's still trying to fight off some free throw demons, if yeah. you will, because they're yeah. they're good shooters. You know, we, we didn't have the double bonus and the automatic two back in the day, but uh, lest we forget how Jim Valvano won a national championship. He fouled on purpose. Yeah. He put people on the line, forced him to make one and ones back in 1983. At this stage, when you look at Xavier's numbers, why not? It's a lot like putting too in golf. You know, once you you feel the yips a little bit, you start to question, right. can I make this? As soon as you start to question it, now you, you you've just done yourself in. And I think that's a little bit of what's happening with Xavier's free throw shooting at times this year. Well, you'll take your three to their one or two. Yeah. Every time that one goes over the top of the backboard from Miles Kale. Still a 12-point lead, but there you see the abysmal free throw shooting story for Xavier. But they've been able to maintain this lead at seven points or more despite that all day. And now time's on their side. They don't have to do anything special. You know, you don't need to go fast. Maybe under 10, you can do something towards the basket. But don't be in a hurry. And this guy, when it's been critical, he's probably been the guy you wanted with the ball, right, Marshall? Well, he has the ability to score from everywhere. Pretty good look late. That one goes off the front rim for Carter. And used up a lot of time, which is good for Xavier. Shavar Reynolds is feeling it. Not this time. And Marshall corrals it. Under two to play now. And the collective sigh you can really hear inside this building. There's a turnover. Numbers. Powell right to Roden. And again, the problem that Xavier, not in this game because they had such a huge lead in the first half, but the problem they run into late game is the ball handler, the point guard position. Who is that going to be? Again, the clock goes tick, tick, tick. Seton Hall not looking to foul just yet. They do now at the wrong time. And hand one is coming as Tandy used his quick burst to get the foul against Gill, his fourth. He's got to be really good. You know, he, he's, he's a shooting guard in a point guard's body. If he can ever find that, the niche of being able to play two positions, 
He already can shoot the ball really well. He's very strong. Great body control once he gets hit at the rim, as you saw there. Special, nice upside for Xavier's yeah. future. Kentucky's player of the year, 3,363 mm -hmm. career points. Wow. At uh, Hopkinsville, Kentucky, University Heights Academy. And again, the problems with the line continue. Think about this, Seton Hall, 37 missed shots today. 37, no second chance points. Reynolds with a teardrop baseline. Jones adds to his rebound to the total. And you and I talked about it when we were going back, talking to the coaches. I remember this time of year as a player, it is really difficult to stay positive when you've lost five of six. Yeah. Well, welcome, <laughs> welcome to the dog days of February. That's it. Tandy again. And this oh. team has got all the bounce right now. Boy, what a huge road victory. For the Musketeers, this will be their best of the season, without question. Nelson with an answer to make it 72 to 60. But uh, kudos to Travis Steele for coaching his guys up at a time when you thought the way they lost that game the other night, a game they should have had against Marquette, that they may not recover from. Trent. Yeah, and, and that's the beauty of, of of the college games. You don't have to wait very long to redeem yourself. And gets the putback. Travis Steele just in his second year, 38 years of age. He'll appreciate this W about as much as any he's ever gotten. When you, you start to question yourselves, wins like these can take you a long way one week to the next. Changes your mentality and your attitude. This is Xavier's first win over a top 10 team. 74 to 62. They win the rebounding story 51 to 22. 18 to nothing in second chance points. In every way imaginable, they got the job done. So the first of two in the books on Fox this afternoon. Up next, we'll send you to Mike Hill in Los Angeles. Stay right where you are.